Hello folks, back out in the garage and lots of extra room on the bench today. Uh, and that's because today we are looking at the Mini MMA 250 welder. Now this is just an absolutely tiny little stick welder. Uh, this is the Zojan or Zohan, I don't know how you pronounce that, but uh, this is uh, this brand. <laughs> but I've seen it in a couple of different brands, a couple of different varieties, but all are pretty much the same exact thing. And what that thing is, is just a tiny DC inverter stick welder. Now the name of the welder is the Mini MMA 250, and a lot of the ads that I've seen do list it as a 20 to 250 amp output welder. One of the ads I did find did list it as a 160 amp welder, uh, but the one that I ordered it from did specifically say in the specs 20 to 250 amps output. Now 250 amps output in a welder this small very hard to believe, but unsurprisingly, if you look at the box itself, uh, it does say pretty clearly on it 160 amps. So very likely the 250 amp rating is either an embellishment, wrong, lies, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I probably would not expect to get 250 amps out of this thing just based on the fact that the box alone says that it won't. Uh, and I did find at least one ad where the specs did list it as a 160 amp output machine. Now this is not a dual voltage welder, this is 240 volt input only, well 220 volt input only. So can't run it off 120 volts. And honestly just with how completely tiny it is, I just wanted to give it a shot. Now the fact that some of the ads have the wrong, or at least potentially the wrong amperage output listed in the specs is not really that surprising. Um, because uh, the ads are kind of hilariously all over the place. Most of them listed as being waterproof, which just clearly isn't correct. They also list exciting features such as portable appearance, things like imported red rubber. So if the ads are anything to go by, it should at least appear portable and it should have some imported rubber on it. But I went ahead and picked one up because I was just too curious about it. I'm going to go ahead and test the output, see how close we can actually get to that 160 or uh, the 250 amps that uh, it claims on a lot of sites. And it is called an MMA250 and uh, I know it's not checked on the front of the box. Uh, but if you look at the side of the box, the one I have uh, clearly is checkmarked as being uh, the 250 because there's also an MMA 200 model. Now, I don't normally unbox on camera, but uh, even just the very box that this thing came in is just so tiny I wanted to show it. Um, doesn't weigh hardly anything, maybe five pounds. So I just wanted to show the box on camera, just show what actually shows up at the door when you order this thing. Now, one reason they can get away with such a small box is that this does not come with uh, a stinger or a work clamp. It doesn't come with any cables or anything like that. This is just a bare power source. Uh, so that's one reason why the box is so small and also one reason why the price is uh, fairly low. Now I've seen these anywhere from about 80 to 100 bucks um, and if it can do even half of what it says it can do that sounds pretty great. Uh, but just keep in mind even if it does work pretty well I don't necessarily think that it's really any better of a value than anything else out there. Maybe even not quite as good of a value as other things out there. Uh, just because it, you're going to have to buy cables and all that kind of stuff. But uh, having to pick up cables for it, it's a small price to pay for something this tiny if it does actually work. So uh, let's pull it out of the box and see what it looks like. Now, sorry, nothing super fancy for opening the box. Just my little pocket knife here. Uh, everything just kind of unceremoniously jammed in there. No big deal. Uh, uh, it does come with an instruction manual. Doesn't look like there's any English in it, but it's possible. So we'll open it up and find out for sure. Uh, it does come with the DINs connectors for the ends of cables. So uh, you would have to buy a cable, stinger, and a work clamp. But it does come, at, at the very least, with the, uh, with the fittings for the end of the cable so that it can connect up to the welder. Not a whole lot of excess packaging or padding or anything, but uh, we'll take a look at the welder and see if it's any worse for wear because of that. So there it is. And now out of the box, we have even more room on the table. Uh, another thing to note about the price uh, is it also does not come with a cord end. Uh, so you're going to have to put a plug on this for, the, for your wall socket. And again, 240 volt input only. 
Uh, so keep in mind that's another uh, small additional cost for this welder. Uh, should be able to pick up a cord locally for, I don't know, 10 to 20 bucks, depending on uh, what your hardware store you have access to. Uh, so here's the cord itself, not all that long, maybe, yeah, maybe three or four feet. So fairly short cord and uh, the wires, uh, I'm gonna guess maybe somewhere around 14 gauge. Uh, but I'd have to look it up to be sure, but I would, I'm gonna guess that's maybe no more than 14 gauge or so. Now it does have a carrying strap because you know, big beefy welder like this, you really need a carrying strap so that you can take the weight off and put it on your shoulder, right? And uh, that is a pretty long strap. I mean, that could definitely be used as a shoulder strap if you wanted it. To be, wanted it. Uh, so here we have a look at the data tag on the welder. Uh, and honestly, these numbers make a lot more sense than the claim of, you know, 250 amp output. Uh, we're looking at 60% duty cycle at 125 amps and 100% duty cycle at 96 amps. Uh, so we'll have to see if it actually can do that. But uh, actually, surprisingly, the data tag is kind of more realistic than what I would have expected. Now, now that kind of amperage output out of something this tiny is, is still kind of impressive. Uh, but that's a little bit more realistic numbers than I expected, really. On the front of the welder, we have uh, DINS 25 connectors. Uh, the amperage adjustment knob, it's pretty smooth, seems to work okay, and we have a little digital display here. Uh, and I will hook up my meter to this and we'll uh, check and see how accurate that, that display actually is in terms of what amperage we have set to how much we're actually getting out of it. And a little OC light, I don't know if that's over current, but I assume that's basically just an overload light, either temperature or current. Back of the welder, we have the fan and the power switch. Uh, one nice thing to see is the fan is, um, obviously it's gonna be tiny and something this small, but they did put just about as big a fan as they could possibly fit in the back of the welder, so uh, that's nice to see. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna go through the trouble of tearing this whole thing apart, but uh, just looking in through the, the side panel here, uh, it's kinda hard to see on the camera, but this uh, metal outer casing is fairly close to the board in there. And there's no shielding, no protection or anything like that on the board. Uh, if this were to get bumped or get dented in or anything, and it's, you know, just due to the size alone, it's pretty stiff. I mean, there's not a big wide span to bend, so uh, I would take a pretty good hit to bend this in. But if it did bend in, uh, this metal outer casing would short directly against the board. So, uh, so it'd be nice to see some kind of an insulator in there uh, just to kind of protect the board from any kind of possible contact with this side plate. You know, not real surprising, but just the, the one thing that I can see just looking straight through there. One thing that's a little funny is the whole welder is very out of square. Um, you can see it, it, it kind of rocks back and forth. Uh, the whole thing is just, it's kind of twisted. So the whole case of it's kind of twisted sideways, so it uh, rocks a little bit. But honestly, overall, nothing super surprising or nasty about it. I mean, definitely a lot of cheapness going on. Um, but, you know, for about 80 bucks or so, uh, so I'll go ahead and get an end put on the welder. I'll fire it up, do some welding with it. I do have already some leads that I'm going to go ahead and use with this, so uh, no problem. I don't have to make them up or anything. But I'll fire it up, do some stick welding with it. I'm even going to try and do some scratch start TIG welding with it, uh, just to see if and how well it works for that. And like I said, I'll measure the output, see how much we can get out of it, see how far off it is from this display, and uh, see how it does. Uh, just in case you were curious, the manual is entirely in Chinese, so if you were interested in having a manual for it, uh, the one it comes with is not going to do you much good unless you sp uh, speak the language or read it, I guess I should say. And not that you probably really need a big comparison to get an idea for how small this thing is. Um, just, you know, after me handling it and sitting on the bench, you can probably get a pretty good idea of it. Uh, but just for the heck of it, uh, here it is next to my cell phone, just because everybody kind of has at least a general idea how big a smartphone is. Uh, this is not a Note or anything like that, extra extra large. Uh, it's a fairly good sized cell phone, but not giant. This is just a Galaxy S7. Uh, and you can see Welder is definitely bigger than that, but not actually substantially. So uh, standing up, this, this phone's actually taller than the Welder. So very, very tiny. And not that it's that big of a deal, but it is just so much easier to do on camera than with most other welders. I'm going to go ahead and weigh it on camera and show you just how light this thing is. And uh, if you can see the display on the scale here, we have about four pounds, eight ounces. So less than five pounds for the welder and power cord. All right, so I put a plug on the end of the power cord and I used a 6-50p, uh, 50 amp plug, just because that's the receptacle that I have in my garage. And be aware, if that's the type of plug you wanna put on this welder, 
It's a little bit fiddly to do it just because the wires in this power cord are so tiny. And I did check and they are actually between a 14 and a 16 gauge, but they are actually closer to a 16 gauge than to 14. So the wires in this power cord, very, very thin. I certainly wouldn't think of them as being up to the task of supplying a 250 amp welder. Now the box does say it's 160 amp welder and I'm inclined to think that that's definitely gonna be more accurate than 250 amps. Now, interestingly, I'll go ahead and turn it on here and uh, you can see, hopefully it shows up on the camera there. Uh, the minimum setting does read as 20 amps, uh, but if you turn the knob all the way up, it does go all the way to 250 amps. So uh, the adjustment range, at least according to what's shown on the display, is 20 to 250 or, well, I guess in this case, 21 to 251. Uh, but I'll definitely measure that and see what we're actually getting out of it. But just bear in mind that the display at least shows 20 to 250 amps. Uh, so we'll have to see what we actually get out of it and how close that is to true. Uh, and I went ahead and pulled the carry strap off of this just because uh, it was actually kind of getting in my way more than anything. It just kind of seemed pointless. So uh, again, this thing <laughs> wobbles, but good sign. At least it does uh, actually power up and uh, seems like the adjustment works and all that. So uh, now we'll actually get to doing some welding with it. Time to actually try this thing out and see what it does. All right, so I've done some testing with the welder. Uh, I went ahead and moved into somewhere more comfortable because I don't exactly need a ton of bench space for this welder. So I figured I could just be sitting at my desk and be a little bit more comfortable for the rest of this. So after a little bit of use, uh, one pleasant surprise and a couple unpleasant not so surprises. Now the first nice thing, uh, while this doesn't have a specific TIG mode, so you're not gonna have a lift start feature, it is a very basic welder. It doesn't have hot start or arc force or anything like that. So it does work pretty well as a scratch start TIG machine. So I went ahead and hooked up a scratch start setup. Just used a CK9V torch. So just a number nine size torch with a, with a valve and did a little bit of scratch start TIG welding and it worked pretty good for that. The arc was fairly smooth all things considered and honestly it did pretty well. So if you just wanted a just absolute small as possible scratch start TIG setup, uh, this does work for that, uh, but that does bring us to the first not so surprising downside to this welder is the output. And as I said, the ad that I purchased this from did list it as a 250 amp max output welder, though on the box it did list it as 160 amps, and a couple of the advertisements that I saw did list it as 160 amps. Now you can see if you look at the data tag on here, uh, it lists a 60% duty cycle at 125 amps. And 125 amps is actually pretty close to the maximum you can get out of this welder. Uh, but the real output you get out of it, I measured it uh, at the minimum setting, you get about 25 amps, and at the maximum setting, you get about 130 amps. Uh, now the second not so surprising downside to this machine is that it does not seem to be very tolerant of long arcing at all. Uh, and that is not just with, like say, a 6010 electrode, which I didn't actually try. Uh, that's with all electrodes. I found that no matter what electrode I was running when stick welding, I had to keep it just crammed down into the puddle or the arc would go out. Uh, now for most rods, it didn't cause that big of an issue once you got it lit and you were running. Um, you really just had to keep that arc tight. What I found is that if you take the electrode and just kind of do that, like to get it started, um, it would start, but then as you draw away to keep the electrode from sticking, it would go right back out. Uh, so you kind of had to keep kind of a lower angle and, and really just kind of scratch the electrode against the metal but not lift up at all um, so I found that it was it was kind of easy to stick when you were starting it because if you kind of did that kind of a motion to keep it from sticking the arc would just go right out and if you kind of kept it lower then obviously it's a little bit easier to stick doing that uh, so not a huge deal but um, as far as uh, inverter stick welders go this was definitely the hardest that I've used as far as getting an arc started and then what I also found is that if you ran towards the hot side for whatever electrode you were using it made it really hard to keep that arc tight enough to keep it from going out because the electrode would actually burn a little bit further up into the flux and then you would kind of get stuttering and sometimes it would even go out. Now, not with all electrodes, but specifically with 6011 and actually what I found is even with 7018, if you didn't, if you weren't just pretty much pressing that rod into the, into the puddle, uh, you would get the arc kind of wanting to go out a little bit sometimes. So it was kind of hard to find that perfect balance if you ran it. Uh, if you ran it just a little bit cold, it was easier to run once it was going, but it was harder to get started. If you ran it a little bit hotter, it was a little easier to get started, but uh, it actually was, the arc was a little bit more apt to go out if you long arced it even a little bit because electrode was burning back faster. So specifically with 6011 and 7018, 
Uh, they were a lot more finicky to run on this welder uh, than pretty much any other inverter welder I've used. Uh, 6013 and 7014 were much easier to run, which they're much easier rods to run anyway, so that's no surprise. But just overall, it works okay for stick welding, but I actually found that it actually TIG welded better than it stick welded. Uh, not too bad, but not the greatest stick welder in the world. Now as far as reliability, I didn't have any issues during my testing. I didn't use it a ton. I did weld with a bunch of different electrodes. I did do some TIG welding with it. I had no issues during my testing. As far as long-term reliability, I can't say what that would be. And keep in mind, I didn't do any um, extensive duty cycle testing. I didn't um, you know, just really stress test the machine to see if I could get it to break or anything like that. So, so I didn't beat on it too hard, um, but I also didn't have any issues with it. So take that for what it is. So overall, in terms of value, um, yes, it's fairly inexpensive, but I don't really think it's that great of a value. There's a lot of other cheap Chinese stick welders out there. They're going to do a lot higher output than this. That are going to come with more accessories than this. Um, and frankly, it will stick weld better than this. The Amico review that I did recently, uh, that Amico welder stick welded a lot nicer than this one does. Also, this doesn't come with any leads. Uh, it doesn't even come with a plug end for the end of the cord. Uh, for that total cost, you could probably get a welder a lot nicer than this one with a lot more uh, accessories. Really, this welder's kind of main draw is just its size, just the, the tiny size of this welder. And if you are just looking for something just this small, uh, this is pretty much the only way to get it. But I would have to say that the benefit of its small size is even tempered a little bit by the fact that it is 240 volts only. Now, one of the draws to a welder this small, at least for me, would be the fact that, I mean, you could pretty much put this thing in a glove compartment of a car and, you know, just have it with you and it would be available for small repairs, just uh, spur of the moment, little welding jobs. I mean, obviously nothing super heavy duty, but uh, would be there. But in that case, 120 volt power would be nice because you could plug it in just about anywhere. This being 240 volts only, you're going to be limited in where you can actually plug this in. So just in terms of being a portable welder, the 240 volt input only um, even limits that a little bit, in my opinion. Weirdly enough, I would say, at least for me personally, uh, the main draw for a welder like this would be just an absolute minimum size, light duty, small project, scratch dart TIG welder. Uh, you can do pretty much with 130 amps TIG welding. So as long as you had access to 240 volt power, um, this thing is just so tiny, so easy to carry around um, that it would be pretty nice for just really small TIG jobs. Uh, but there again, the portability aspect of it does still lose out a tiny bit because, you know, with TIG welding, you have to have uh, an argon tank and regulator. So there's really only so portable that a TIG setup can be. And if you're carrying around a 40 or 50 pound argon bottle, um, you know, this little four and a half pound welder versus you know, a 10 pound lunchbox style welder um, really doesn't seem to add a whole lot of value in my opinion as term, in terms of size. But either way, there you have it. It does work, 130 amp output, despite what some of the ads and even the display on the welder itself says. Has a pretty smooth arc for scratch start TIG. Stick welds okay, but uh, nothing too special, nothing to write home about. Kind of frustrating with some rods. So I think that about covers it. Uh, if you have any questions or if I left out anything that you wanted to know about this machine, just post it up down below and I'll answer if I can. As always, thank you for watching. Take care.